change. Well, cool, you guys. Um, thank you. Best thing to mention, though. Yes. We're planning on doing a Zeitgeist Camp Burning Man this year, too. No! Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, yes! Yes! Yeah. 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 Circular City up there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes! Yeah, we've already started making plans for it. leaps and bounds, leap of faith. Artificial intelligence in deep space. Time machine travelers visit the present and reveal to the revelers a mystical message. Only give away where they can say the relevant. Hints and a glimpse to the ways they're living in. Astronomical, phenomenal new abilities. Collective consciousness moves to the next degree. Winter solstice, the gods will indulge in emotional bonds with the stars and beyond. Life will go on, but the bomb will be dropped, and the rules and the realms of the normal will stop. Social the Social Programming 101. <laughs> That's Douglas Millett! <laughs> that was Douglas <laughs> Millett! <laughs> yes, it is. With a clean slate, no longer lost in space. When the moon is in the seventh house, Jupiter aligns with Mars. These will guide the planets, and love will steer the stars. Golden visions, living out electric dreams. Life as we know it tears apart at the seams. Water bearer here to pour light on mankind. Swim with the flow, don't get pulled by the tide Will we rise or get left behind or will it bury us? This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius Considering the enduring wonders of creation throughout the universe and how unsustainable so many of our human systems are. I figured learning how the universe creates and sustains life would actually be quite useful. Each of these little packets of wholeness that Einstein discovered, called a quantum, is made out of its surroundings, but is distinct within it, like a whirlpool in water. These packets are always the same pattern, no matter what size and they are surprisingly relevant to issues as seemingly disconnected as the wars in the Middle East, the global financial collapse, and how to achieve justice for everyone. We're about to explore how. Mathematicians call this pattern the torus. The energy in a torus flows in through one end, circulates around the center, and exits out the other side. It's balanced, self-regulating, and always whole. I was first officially introduced to the Taurus by scientist and inventor Arthur Young. Futurist Dwayne Elgin explains how the Taurus is the primary pattern that nature uses for life at every scale. Evolution means to, uh, to unfold, to roll out. So the question is, what is the universe rolling out? And what the universe is rolling out is self-organizing systems. And you can see this at every scale. A self-organizing system is a technical term for just uh, a system getting a hold of itself, uh, knowing itself, essentially. And uh, if we go to nature, uh, we, can, we can look at and we can see the self-organizing forms uh, throughout. We can see it in, in the cross-section of an orange, the cross-section uh, of an apple. We can see it uh, in the dynamic nature of a tornado. Uh, we can see it in the um, magnetic field around the Earth, a similar magnetic field around a, uh, an individual. We can see it in the structure of an entire whirlpool galaxy. Uh, we can see it in the structure uh, of, a, of a small atom. Uh, at every scale throughout its entire history, the universe has one single project. It's growing toruses. The universe is a torus growing factory. Starvation is now a thing of the past, so people have lots to be proud of. Be sure to watch tonight, we have a breaking news story. Technology has officially ended world hunger.
My name is Tyson Austin Eberly, and you're watching Zeitgeist Live. It has been five months, five months since we've been back in here, and uh, we've missed you. We hope you missed us. Really, though, it's great to be back in the studio with the whole crew. We now got a wonderful house together. This is the Austin Zeit House. What's up? We'll be doing a show on the Zeit House in the near future. So in the last five months, obviously, lots has happened. And uh, what we had originally planned was to have a kind of like a sampler show and uh, just kind of touch on all the different things that we want to have entire shows on over the next coming weeks, you know, a month, month and a half or so. But uh, as you know, things are happening so quickly right now, so rapidly, that uh, plans have changed. Last night, or yesterday, was uh, you know, November the 11th, 2011, 11, 11, 11. And if you're a Gregorian calendar numerology kind, uh, this is significant uh, for some reason. Uh, but uh, what did happen is uh, a movie was released called Thrive. And uh, this is kind of like in the Zeitgeist movement how there was kind of like a screenings taking place for uh, Peter Joseph's film Zeitgeist Moving Forward and all you know, different chapters across, across the world, I guess. I don't know how global Thrive was like that, but I know here in Austin there was a screening uh, of this film. And uh, it was also released simultaneously online um, and uh, you, can, you, can, you can actually see that at, uh, I, believe it's, I believe it's called thrivemovie.com, but you know, do a Google search. Anyways, uh, you know, uh, for $5 you could rent it, and uh, so we went ahead and did that last night as a group, and we all sat around and watched it, and we were really, we were really impressed with this film, we're really kind of blown away. It's, it's a little bit different from uh, kind of like Peter Joseph's films, uh, who's the filmmaker of the Zeitgeist movies. Uh, this one touched on um, deeper, uh, I don't know that I'd call it deeper subjects, but just different subjects. Still touching on finance and the fractional reserve uh, lending system, but also going into such as free energy, uh, the principles behind kind of like centripetal force or uh, what they call the torus, as you saw right there in our opening, uh, as well as how crop circles are related to this. Uh, possible UFO technology or anti-gravity technology, um, extraterrestrials in general visiting us, uh, some of the, the messages that are encoded in the crop circles that are, that are revealed are really fascinating. Um, and uh, to, to, you know, reasons why, uh, the, you know, certain people in, in finance and that are controlling our food, our energy, uh, our medicines, our, our to our, I don't know, our finance, of course. Uh, it really, really tied it all together really nicely and uh, really connected a lot of dots. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be screening different parts of Thrive and uh, Jordan Berlingeri will be joining me for a little commentary after each, after each segment. And, uh, and yeah, so uh, we're really excited. We definitely, uh, I wanna promote this film. I love the information that's presented in it. And I think it's, it's, it's another tool to get out to the masses to help them, you know, wake up, start caring, realize that, you know, this world that's been kind of created around us um, is being manipulated at the upper high levels, the 1%, you might say, and, uh, and what we can do to uh, kind of like work our way out of this prison system that we live in. And so at the end of the film, they go into a three-part transition phase, and uh, we're definitely we're going to be showing you guys that. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about it. You know, let's see, we've got 50 minutes left in this live broadcast. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and with no further ado, let's jump right into it. And uh, following that, Jordan and I will be back to kind of discuss what we just watched. So what might these remarkable designs mean? Here are some two-dimensional versions that seem to be revealing the Taurus in 3D.
here is the vector equilibrium. and the related pattern of 64 that we saw encoded in the arts of so many ancient cultures. That was the segment of Thrive, the movie, um, and obviously those were crop circles. He goes on to talk about, in, those, in the crop circles, how, you know, he also shows how, gives example of kind of man-made crop circles that were obviously, you know, hey, these are, we made these, and they're really rudimentary looking as compared to some of these elaborate, mathematically, you know, uh, perfectly balanced crop circles and what they mean behind them, so I don't know. Jordan Berlin, Jerry. Hey, man, welcome to the show. Thanks for being Thanks for having me, man. This yeah. is uh, really a privilege and an honor to be on here and uh, to be living in the same house, which we'll get to later, and, uh, you know, just to be sharing in this experience. And uh, I guess we'll cut, for me, I just want to jump straight to what we saw with the, uh, with the Taurus and the, uh, you know, the framework for this mathematical magic is what it is to me. It's just kind of yeah. like this concept that, you know, it's, it's been, you know, we've been able to access it, you know, ancient cultures. Another thing that was in the Thrive film was how ancient cultures would go back, you know, I mean, the pattern for this is in art, it's in stories, it's been discussed, you know, throughout the ages. And, uh, and really what we have now is, is you know, the know-how to put this framework together, this, you know, this pattern that's found in nature, and really utilize it to benefit, you know, the majority, maybe the 100 percent, if you will, of the population instead of just a small minority clique, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of in, in the know and kind of, you know, using this knowledge against us, so to speak, right now. And it, it, you're, you're right, man, this film was great. I was very impacted by it, and I think uh, there's a lot of time and, and area for discussion on, on every single topic that's in this whole film, so. Yeah, we could really, we could really, really go off. Totally, if we, if we wanted to on this film. It's, uh, it's great, everybody check it out. Seriously, it's great. Um, what else do I want to say about uh, that part right there? Um, you know, I, Here's the thing for me, man. Like, I've been really fascinated with, I don't know, crop circles and, you know, UFOs and ancient aliens and, and present and future aliens and things like this. Uh, but I haven't felt that it was, you know, relevant or absolutely necessary to know about in order to achieve a more equitable world. Right. It, that's what I ultimately I want to see, you know, on planet Earth is everybody yeah, living yeah, a yeah, nice yeah, totally. standard of living, you know? Totally. So, you know, through our, through the education that we've found through the Zeitgeist Movement and the Venus Project, we understand that, you know, the leading cause of violence is inequality. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, what they're doing with this film is, is they're really showing how, you know, yes, we have things like geothermal and, you know, all these, you know, the sun, we have these renewable energy sources, but we also have things that anti-gravity matter and, you know, these yeah. types of technology that we could also implement just like if it was implemented on a mass scale if if the technology would be allowed to be developed in open source something right. like this you know every neighborhood could have one of these units and you know over the course of the next 10 years we could you know we could get these in a things. generation yeah in a, in generation. a generation we could do this in we a generation we stuff. could do this and then you know perhaps start building Brand new cities, right, right. Out, circular cities. But for now, we we can get sustainable and free now. Just I think like overnight it could happen. I mean, almost overnight. You hear about this robotics company in Japan that's shipping out, you know, over a million robotic accessories around the world. So we're moving toward this automated future, you know, that we've yeah. all discussed and we've all dis been talking about since we've been introduced to the Zeitgeist movement. And now we see that. These, these machines can be powered for free, you know, and if this ruling class of elite, you know, has access to this free abundant energy and they're still going to insist that we don't have free access to right. free abundant anything, yeah. then, you know, it's going to be very difficult for me to really be, you know, part of that system still or part of this system, you mm -hmm. know. I'm, and I think this is important that we bring this stuff out here and, and get in deep discussion about these things because there's no there's no other way to get you know to where we're trying to get to where we all should be I think morally ethically spiritually 
you know, we should be accommodating our, our mutual needs, you know, mm -hmm. fee, f uh, food, water, you know, clean air, and just respect and decency, you know, civil, dis uh, civil obedience, you know. So it's just one of those things that uh, we, we need to continue to pursue. And I'm just happy to be a part of the process, man. For I don't sure. know about you. No, very happy, very happy indeed. Um, so uh, I don't know if, uh, are we ready to move on to the next segment of Thrive? All right, fantastic. Okay, you guys. Uh, here is our next segment of Thrive the Movie. I asked free energy inventor Adam Trombley why he thought this technology was being suppressed and if the UFO phenomenon was related. We've had major military people at great risk to themselves say, yes, these things are real. Why do you think the military industrial complex doesn't want that statement to be made? Because you start thinking about what kind of technology is behind that. That's the bottom line. The suppression of UFO phenomena is hand in hand with the suppression of so-called free energy. The energy is extracted from the fabric of the space around us, which means it cannot be metered. That is a direct threat to the single largest industry in the world, energy. It's goodbye ExxonMobil, goodbye oil, goodbye coal, goodbye linear transmission of electricity through power lines, all that gone. Unfortunately, it's someone's $200 trillion piggy bank the proven oil and gas and coal reserves are worth north of $200 trillion. This information coming out would completely change geopolitical power more than anything since well in recorded human history. And it would happen in a generation. I started to examine the breakthrough solutions and much to my surprise these concepts have been proven in hundreds of laboratories throughout the world and yet they have not really seen the light of day. Rather than smashing things together and trying to control the explosion, these new technologies rely on blending, of dancing with what naturally is. The common denominator of all the free energy devices I've seen is that they mimic in one way or another the Taurus energy shape. You don't have to believe in free energy technology to be concerned about the repression of ideas and inventions. I found myself thinking, what better way to justify our dependence on oil, coal, nuclear, and other dangerous and dirty technologies than to claim there are no better, cheaper alternatives? Okay. Okay, so that was uh, Thrive, the film, a segment that you just saw. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you're watching Zeitgeist Live. We are the Austin chapter, and uh, we produce a local public access show called Zeitgeist Live. So we are live right now, really live, going out to Austin. Uh, so the person that you just saw talking, his name is Foster Gamble. He is the uh, narrator as well as also the, uh, the director and creator of Thrive. He's even financier. I mean, <laughs> and he comes from Procter Gamble, so this is this is leading into the next yeah. thing. He is an an heir, or if you will, to the Procter Gamble family, which is which was really interesting. I must be honest with you, yeah. I was a bit shocked later on in the film. He starts to go into he starts to name <laughs> names. He starts to name names. You know, the, he goes into the Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, you know, who are the the the, the owners or the the you know, the board members of the Federal Reserve Bank. We don't have his security, so we're not, we're going to not name those names specifically, but we can just kind of, <laughs> you know, can't Pause just kind of allude to the fact that he's name dropping. And but it's, it's out there right now. Yeah. Here's, here's the thing. It's out there right now. It's all over the internet. It's easy to find. And, uh, you know, you, yeah, I mean, it was just, he really came through. Because at first, it was focusing on all, the, all this really fantastic stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I had my, I had my, not my doubts, but my my wonders about the film. What are all are they going to cover? You know, how deep are they going to go? And uh, because this film has been promoted for at least two or three months now, we, you know, we've Man. known that this was going to be coming out. And uh, dude, he goes there. <laughs> <laughs> Not only does he go there, but he goes there and dosy -si does and dances around and shakes hands. Because I mean, think about the Procter Gamble, you know, fa or the families that make up that company. He, he would have had access to some of these things that he's discussing. So it's not just like, you know, yeah. and he was very, you know, kind of questionable throughout the film. You know, I wanted to see, 
you know, where we went wrong. And, and, and that's his approach. He was just like, I'm from this family. He lines it out for you. He, he definitely like justifies and qualifies his credentials, if you will, which I, I could care less about because he's talking the speak, you know, he's talking yeah. the same language. He's showing us that, yeah, there's aliens in this film. Yeah, there's, renew there's technology that is vastly beyond what we have access to right now. And yeah, they're trying to tell us how to gain access to some of this technology so we can, you know, move up in the, you know, cosmic, galactic, what have you, you know, what, the relationship that we're going to have in the future with intergalactic beings. Mind-blowing. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's really something that's, that's very special, very close to my heart. You were mentioning earlier about the, the crop circles, man. We've had similar pursuits. And I also want to mention the fact that I think it's awesome that we're talking about a Taurus, a toroidal shape. And you and I are both Taurians. And well, it's just a play on words, but it's kind of it's fun, you know? It's kind of <laughs> cool. So... I don't know, I like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Eric pointed out it's spelled differently fully. But right. <laughs> so, Semantic, whatever. This Wilson's a tourist. Right. Um, all right, so uh, we're going to jump right in uh, to the next segment of Thrive and uh, keep the show going. All right. I found it revealing that in the same year the Federal Reserve was founded, 1913, the Internal Revenue Service was also established. An income tax was then instigated so you and I would have to pay the politicians' debt plus interest to the bankers. The problem is we have a privately owned central bank system uh, in the United States disguised as a government-owned system. Now, if you look in the, the uh, uh, telephone book here in the Washington, D.C. area, um, you look up for Federal Reserve in the blue government pages, it's not there. It's in the white pages right next to Federal Express. It's a privately owned central bank. What is the uh, proper relationship, what should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. We have a private bank that prints money on behalf of the Treasury. The Federal Reserve prints money on a debt-based system which creates scarcity. But it puts a group of insiders in a position of having access to all the data about the economy when we don't. So you have a, a small group of bankers who understand the data on how the money works in the economy and it gives them the ability to print money in a way that the insiders are protected and everybody else is drained. Catherine went on to compare a healthy economy to a vibrant Taurus, balanced, freely flowing, and energized throughout, in contrast to what's happening in our current economy. What, what you have is, uh, is a system that's very dynamic and it's trying to optimize. Um, but but intertwined in the core of it, you have a tapeworm. The way a tapeworm works in your body is it injects a chemical into your body that makes you crave what's good for the tapeworm and bad for you. You have a parasite that's, that's very much manipulating and engorging itself at, at the expense of the whole. We live in a tapeworm economy where the financial elite are the tapeworm and they're feeding on us and they don't like it when people blow their cover. There you go, so uh, that was a segment of Thrive. The woman that they were just uh, showcasing there, she, is, uh, she used to work, I don't know, I think she was- Senior, Bush Senior. Bush Senior, yeah. thank you, Bush Senior. And so, you know, she's an insider, you know, that's- <clears throat> Whistleblower. Yeah, whistleblower, and you know, of course they raided, you know, there are many stories presented in the film where they, you know, people's labs are raided, their offices are raided, headquarters are raided. Everything's confiscated, and then they try and, if they need to, basically they just harass people to the point where it's just like, I, you know, it's not worth it. You know, this is this pursuit that I that I'm doing right now is just not worth it. And I don't know how quickly, you know, this ruling class or this elite comes to the decision to either, you know, perhaps off somebody, which they do discuss that as well. There was a one of the guys they were going to interview for the film was mysteriously beaten, bludgeoned to death outside of his you know, childhood home, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and so this is some of the stuff, the information you can access on the website, and there's some backstories to, yeah. you know, more information on some of the things we saw, but here we're talking, 
you know, about how the Federal Reserve was structured, you know, how it came into being. And there's some very extensive research on, on this particular topic. And it's, it's right on time yeah. with the occupation, you know, Occupy movement totally. and everything like that. And we're looking at the Federal Reserve Bank and we're trying to say, hey, this isn't really what we wanted or, yeah. you know, how did we get here? And, and it's definitely through the financial system and control of that system and, and control of not, not that, but more specifically, the money-making machine that right. has just been brutally misused by, yeah, you know, and yeah, just ridiculously, yeah. you know. The counterfeiting machine. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Counterfeiting everything from, you know, money to dreams, so. Yeah, uh, they talk about Nikola Tesla in it and, uh, you know, how uh, I believe it was J.P. Morgan. Yes. That, yeah. that realized that he was basically going to be able to send electricity wirelessly for free to everybody and realized, hmm, that's going to be tough to profit off of. And then pulled all of his funding from the project, and then I think the tower was dismantled or De destroyed, destroyed his. Destroyed, yeah, destroyed and he was everything. discredited. I think the thing with, that they were saying in the film was that J.P. Morgan ha had ownership of the copper mines, and uh, yeah. that was used to string the the, the cabling for electricity at the time. Mm -hmm. So Tesla's right. like, no, we don't need this. We can just do it at, in the air, you know. And and right. J.P. Morgan's like, no, no, we can't, son. Uh, we're right. gonna do it this way, and this is why. And sure. And, you know, I couldn't help but to think, you know, I couldn't help but to think, it's like, God, why couldn't he, where else could he go to get that money to, to start it back up? But, you know, at 40 years old or however old he was when this, when this happened, it's like, I can see how this would be such a blow and to be realizing the, um, the force that you're going up against, yeah. it would almost seem kind of hopeless and to just, again, say it's just not worth it. Yeah, yeah. And it's well, yeah, the, and also, I mean, you think about you think about how much time and dedication somebody would put into something like that only to realize that, you know, their efforts are 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 nothing. And then so for the past 100 years we've been living in this box where none of this has been accessible to us, the information, the knowledge, none of it. Yeah. And it's actually even been suppressed, which is, you know, kind of what they were talking about here earlier in the in that sequence in the last sequence with uh, that inventor Adam Trombley, I think his name is. And they showed this apparatus that generates energy. Mm -hmm. And now, now you think about it, why would, why would we want that to not exist? Right. You know, it doesn't make any sense. I want, I want free energy. I don't want to have to pay an electric bill. But guess, guess who wants me to pay an electric bill? Sure. Yeah, the gas, oil, gas companies, coal, you know, big energy, all that. So, and, and I really think that there's, there's something to say for this green technology and stuff. Because if we do have something like this, which can be made and, and really distribute a lot of energy in a small, you know, for a small apparatus, mm -hmm. then it, it even baffles my mind where why should we even use the, the resources we have on perhaps solar panels or something like that when we could just do, you know, maybe yeah, what? for sure, man. A thousand of these and place them all over the planet and boom, right. you're done. Agreed. Energy for at least until the machine wears down and you just have, you know, I yeah. don't know, you know, something, you know. Which, it, it, there's so many better, better alternatives, it seems like we need to start doing it. And yeah. I think we will. Yeah, definitely. And some of these machines that, that, that they're showing in the movie didn't look like they'd be breaking down anytime soon. They looked like solid, well, smooth running machines. You know, I mean, what do I know? I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a professional. Me neither. But, neither so. but they looked really, they looked solid. They looked like they, basically they were just perpetual machines. You'd start them and then they'd run. We'll get Doug Millette's take on this and sure. see. We'll contact him and, and do a little bit of R&D on our part to see if, you know. And I'm sure he's a firm believer in, in this kind of technology. I mean, he's, yeah. he's all over the place with, uh, with technology and being a, a great resource, at least for, you know, our chapter at one point. And now he's in Florida, you know, doing his thing. Mm -hmm. uh, which, I guess, that now that we're on the topic of Doug, cybernetic farm systems coming. And this stuff is happening. There are people out there, not just, you know, Foster Gamble. There's... There's people that, you know, we have had the privilege and honor to meet, you know. Uh, there's people that we don't even know in other countries that are doing things, governments like in China. Right. You know, they're, they're building codes now where they have to be completely off the grid and sustainable. So a lot, of, a lot of us don't hear that information here because we get our Fox News, CNN, and we get these headlines. And, yep. you know, here we are in this kind of, oh, yeah, we got this to choose from. That's true. That's true. But there's this whole greater realm of truth outside of oh that, my God. you know, that we don't really Oh, my God. Yeah. It's tie it's, into. It's in the internet right now, it's like in the film they go over, like in the last 25 years, the media institutions have been whittled down from 50 to 5. And so it's not that hard to, to understand or believe that out of those five big media institutions, they can really control or limit what it is we receive, what right. the 
what the populace receives, at least the American populace. The, the, sh the movie kind of focuses on America. Not, not really focuses on it, but yeah. the filmmaker believes, and when I think about it, I kind of have to agree to him, that if, if America falls into a totalitarian dictatorship or something like this, that's it, you know, as far as like, a, we're kind of like the last stronghold because we have this history of, you know, you know, I don't know, Armed revolution, Armed revolution and like, you, know, you know, standing up for our rights, our freedoms, and, yeah. and, you know, things like this. Uh, so, you know, I kind of agree with him on that one. Yeah. I started thinking about it, I was like, I could see that. Because it's strange, um, America is kind of like this center of attention for throughout the rest of the world. And for as apathetic as we've become, you know, oh. as a country, just isolationist to the max, unless we're going over to rob somebody of their resources right which you know that's my perspective that's what I've seen that's that's kind of how it works you know I mean there's there's a different way and and I can't you know and maybe I'm jaded a little bit you know mm -hmm. by being American in the sense of you know like what we're doing on a global platform but you know on, outside of that I have to understand that that's not me as sure. a person that's my government you know these are my elected officials so to speak that are supposed to represent me so I don't need representation you know I, I can represent myself, you can, and that's, I think that's so key that we even have a platform to be ourselves and say, hey, I don't agree with, with what's going on here, and we're yes. gonna get together and you know, join movements like the Zeitgeist Movement, like the Thrive Movement. You know, there's a lot the of Occupy movement. the Occupy Movement. There's a lot of things there's happening a lot of right movement. now. Get in where you fit in, move with the movement. You yeah, know? definitely, but just, just get involved. Yeah. You know, find one that resonates with you and get involved because we're all working toward the same goal which is freedom it's a parallel path you know we yeah, might absolutely. come closer at times and but, you know we're freedom. gonna yeah we're not gonna just be spiritual there. freedom but absolute freedom mm -hmm. i'm talking freedom from the dollar you know because right now a lot of our freedom is based off of what we can purchase mm -hmm. you know try to go somewhere anywhere without any money yeah <laughs> it's, it's, good luck you know it works i mean i guess you can you, you might have to sacrifice some accommodations you know yeah, uh, you know, there's people that busk, there's people that travel, you know, and just kind of, kind of do but that. But you end but up doing it, uh, you know. I don't know you just right. end up being, having to utilize somebody else's kindness. Right. And you're, you know, and then there's only so much that you can really utilize before you start becoming. Right. Yeah. Well, well you, you know, and it's funny. But if it was, but if it, if the system was organized in a way to where there was an unlimited amount of energy, access to resources, there'd be no. No concern, no guilt, no, you know what I'm saying, no worry about hungry, it. It's just, eat. Yeah, you want to go hungry, somewhere, eat. go. You want to go somewhere, go. You know, just eat. No money, there's no exchange here. Just hit, there's a train, jump on it. So Take ultimately, off. ultimately, free energy, you know, abundance, these things lead toward, a, a, you know, a closed system, balanced load, world global economy, hence a resource-based economy. And so this film, we feel that, you know, at the end they come to a, kind of like a different, like a three-part transition mm -hmm. plan. You know, and then, you know, we, everybody starts doing this around the world, and then we're like, hey, you know, this is silly that we're kind of like, you know, got these borders here. Let's, we're all good. We love each other. Let's do right. this. And then we can move on. Okay, that's enough talky talk. Rolling on to our next segment of Thrive, the movie. I see this process as nothing less than a struggle for the soul of humanity. It begins with a shift in worldview, answering the question, who are we really? What is human nature? Are we humans what the elite would have us believe? Stupid, greedy creatures who, if left to our own devices, would devolve into violence and chaos, and so for our own good must be ruled over by a self-appointed elite? Or are we naturally caring and creative? I believe when people are healthy and have what we need to survive, we can create a world based on integrity, freedom, and compassion. A world where everyone can thrive. Which of these two views will shape our future? That's our choice now. The agenda of the ruling elite is the product of a destructive worldview based on their beliefs that there's not enough to go around, that some people are more deserving than others, 
and that their own safety depends on maintaining absolute control over the rest of us. In short, their worldview is based on scarcity and fear. But as powerful as they are, the architects of the New World Order cannot create their dreadful vision without our collusion. To stop them, to render their agenda obsolete, we have to wake up. We have to take action. This is like the, the last effort of a particular phase of civilization. It's its last gasp, really, and I often use the metaphor of the caterpillar becoming the butterfly, because the caterpillar crunches its way through the ecosystem, it's very destructive, it eats 300 times its weight in a day, until it's so bloated that it hangs itself up and goes to sleep, and its skin turns into a hardened chrysalis, and then in its body you get these imaginal cells, biologists actually call them that, forming within the caterpillar's body. The caterpillar's body then actually becomes a nutritive soup for those cells. But what's important about that metaphor is that the old and the new coexist for a while. And it's the job of the caterpillar to preserve its life. It's a desperate government that we have now trying to control oil in the Middle East and wanting now to promote nuclear energy and all these things that they know better, but they have to play out the role of protecting themselves. It's their job. And if you love butterflies, you don't go around stepping on caterpillars. So we can't hate them. It doesn't do any good. But if you want alternative energy, you don't ask an oil economy uh, administration to produce it for you. We have to produce it. We imaginal cells have to show that it's cheaper, more efficient, and, and more effective. Our job is to build a new world. If we had the vision and a worldview that says our crisis is a birth and everybody's needed and everybody will have more of what they truly want, you could turn this desperate world into a renaissance of human creativity and love. Fantastic. Welcome back. That was Thrive, the movie. If you're just now joining us, you're watching Zeitgeist Live. My name is Tyson Austin Eberly. This is Mr. Jordan Berlingeri, uh, co-coordinator for the Texas State Chapter. Along uh, with Pete Perez. Along with Peter Perez. Who he's not here today, but we missed the guy, so. Hey, Pete, if you're watching, we love you. Uh, okay, so, uh, you know, I want to touch on more. We're going to show one more segment from Thrive and... Uh, I just want to say, uh, I, lo I really I loved the movie, uh, and uh, you know, I, I was wondering if it would get into kind of the mechanics of the monetary system, mm -hmm. because he did just say that, that the elite, uh, they base their model off of scarcity and fear. Right. And uh, you know, a resource-based economy is based off of you know, abundance, and you could say love, or freedom, mm -hmm. or thrival, if you will. Right. And um, there are two different systems there. A monetary system has to have scarcity in order to really exist. Or at least the idea, the idea. of scarcity. You know? It needs the idea of scarcity, whether it's real or manufactured scarcity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and so they didn't really touch on that. They didn't, it was more the elite. But, right, right. But not so much the system that the elite use in order to maintain their power control, which is what you know, the Zeitgeist movement uh, focuses on quite a bit. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, it, you know, I was little, I was left a little like, you know, because you are kind of left with a sense of, uh, I, you know, I, I prefer the, I prefer seeing it as not so much as of a they and that I, yeah, yeah. and that I am being controlled and you are the, you know. You're the enemy. There's a, there's a known enemy and, and kind of, yeah, I, I don't either. I, I, I don't, uh, but I also don't like to be associated with people who embody certain character traits. I wouldn't call them flaws, you know what I mean? Because I do feel like, you know, we've, we've learned most of our behavior. As we go back to, you know, moving forward, you know, most of our behavior is taught to us through our environment. And so if you grew up in an elitist structured environment, you would by default be, a, you know, an elitist. Just like if you were Muslim and, you know, or Christian or, you know, Buddhist or whatever, your, lo your location, your environment is going to have a, a deciding factor right. in the way your psychological development occurs, the way that, you know, your, your upbringing, your cultural, like, norms, right. you know, and, and what we have here now with the internet and through all these movements is, like, 
wait a minute, we're people, we speak different languages, but we have some common needs. Yes. And these are the common needs we have. We need food, we need water, yep. we need a little shelter from the storm, you know, yep. and we need clean air. And if those things are met, then, then we can thrive. Yes. And I think that's where we're, I think that's why it's so amazing right now to be, you know, to, to be sitting at the house last night watching this film, relating it to what, you know, we're trying to do, mm -hmm. and, then, and then push through with this momentum now that we're gonna have going into this 2012 year, yep. you know, and, and how much how much excitement and how much, I, I mean, just seeing stuff like this gets me away from all that. Well, I don't even really subscribe to the ma you know, mass media anything anymore because look at what's going on outside of that. There's God, so much excitement. There's no fear. There's no scarcity. Everything's going to be okay. We're going to live in an abundant, thriving, you know, kind yep. of world. And it's going to be so exciting. So. Yep. Yep. You're absolutely right. Going back to the, uh, t to the value of this order, these people, we are all products of this society. Right. You know, we, you could say victims of culture, but you know we're products of this system, and mm. those people, those elites, and and any any social class for for that matter, you kind of start to identify with it and resonate with it, and uh, it's kind of what you know. Mm -hmm. it, it might be all for some people, it's all they know, and if they're not exposed, if they don't travel much, you know, if they're not exposed to different cultures, different systems, different value orientations, you. Tend, we tend to kind of lock on and identify with that, and it becomes kind of like part of our ego. It, it's, it's, it's what we identify as. This is who I am, based off of my possessions, right. how much money I make, my social class, who I associate with, things like this. And so all of us, yeah, all, everybody's, True. nobody's excluded from that. Nobody. And, uh, and so kind of especially these elites. Right. I was going to say we're all guilty because, you know, just as the elite play their role, yeah. we go along with it. We allow sure. that behavior to, you know, kind of, you know, dictate our choices. Yep. And what we lose when we start, you know, associating the person of, you know, ourselves, or not the person, I shouldn't say that because there's, you know, some sovereignty mm -hmm. activists who don't like the person idea, but we as men, women, you know, we as beings, you know, sovereign living souls, uh -huh. uh, we, we, we have the ability to choose, you know, freedoms, you know, that's, that's, that's what freedom is, choice, you know. Yep. And so once we choose to associate with a certain kind of psychological or label category, you know, stereotype, whatever, um, we become that, you know, and we give up choice in a sense. You know, we don't, we're not able to freely choose, oh, well, I don't want to be a Republican today or I don't want to be, you know, a Democrat today. I want to be somebody who listens to both sides and you know, makes up my mind, not just because there's this label that says this is this and that's that and I associate with that label. I think now we're all awakening to this, ah, I'm going to go a little bit further. You know, that's a good cover to that book, but it might help to, li to read it a little bit, you know. So that's kind of where I'm at. And then I have the, the website, Thrive Movement, since we're on the Thrive thing, man, there's so much information there. And I'm just, I get, I get really excited yeah. about all the information we have access to now. So, yeah. Yeah, it really is a, an exciting time, an exciting world that we're living in right now, for sure. Okay, uh, with that, let's go ahead and jump into our last segment of Thrive, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so it uh, looks like we're having a little technical difficulty. Load time. <laughs> a little load time there. Where's Nikolai Tesla when you need him? We had like terabyte download speeds and stuff, and you know, we, <laughs> why? could have that now for sure for sure for sure right now i want to i want to go ahead and just uh, speak on okay so using our system to create a resource based economy or a free system um, yeah. right now this the, the political system is if it if anything changed if it, you know it, it wouldn't really exist huh, did I, did that make sense basically if it if it would allow for the facilitation of change and emergence right. It wouldn't exist in the in the structure that we know it to right now. It's really rigged. Right. It's really rigged. And so, uh, okay. So, right. I want to come back to that. Though. I want to come like, back. To I that like too. that point. Though. Okay. I keep going. Right. To stop them, to render their agenda obsolete, we have to wake up. We have to take action. This is like the the last effort of a particular phase of civilization. Mm. It's its last gasp, really, and now you are. We saw that one. Last one, last one, last one. Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so electoral reform. Uh, yes. The Electoral Reform Act. And a gentleman named Robert Steele and, you know, his peoples are basically, he, there's a YouTube video. You can just YouTube Electoral Reform Act, uh, Robert Steele, 
And it's a great little presentation that he gave to the New York, uh, some, some New York occupants. It looks like it's in a dire, uh, diner. For them to bring this up in the GA with this whole, you know, two-page act on, yeah. you know, just bullet points of uh, we are not going to move forward uh, in our, you know, with this democracy. We're going to sustain this occupation. It's going to continue to get grow, uh, grow and get bigger and bigger unless we can see significant changes to our political system, to the political process. Right. Um, and if, if that were to be done, I really think it would open things up and allow the facilitation of a new emergent, um, you know, system to come about. You know, I, uh, I think uh, within, the, within the framework of, of the electoral reform, he's, he's, he's really looking for the removal of the electoral college. If, yes. you know, or at least that's yes. one of the elements, of at least yeah. one of the bullet points that he discusses. And, and I can just, I, I remember in you know, high school government classes thinking, you know, okay, we've got the, the electoral college and they vote for who we vote for. It didn't really make sense to me because I don't, I don't really trust you know, that, that, you know, whatever. Yeah. I, you know, I've been shown that it's not necessarily set up in a way that could be, you know, truthful 100% of the time. Because, you know, there's the popular vote, and I think we saw this with the yeah. Bush administration and, and, and that whole ordeal. Popular vote doesn't mean anything because yeah. you have this electoral college that can be bought, sold, traded, whatever. And I think that that's what Robert Steele was talking about, just Absolutely. trying to address that, get the money out of politics. One thing, yeah, sure. Yeah. But, hey, in order to do that, we need to maybe start from a lower or higher you yeah. know, plane, if you, you know, whichever way you want to go on the scale. But I think he want, But what's really happening in my when I see it is all these things are occurring at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so there's this, there's this. And that's why we're saying, wherever you are, whatever you feel like needs to change, get involved with whatever aspect of that yeah. change that needs to occur. What, even if you want to tighten the leash, you know, go yeah. ahead, be on that side, polarize with them, get, <laughs> get over there and do it. At least know oh, who you on. are. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Not yeah. really. But, you know, come, come over here. We're, we're, doing, we're doing Jedi mind tricks and stuff, so. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> I, I agree. Just get involved because something else they, they touch on, and this is something that I've been saying, is the real change is going to come from us voting with our dollars, mm -hmm. being really conscious about where we spend our money, who we spend it with, you know, are we continuing to fuel big agra, big pharma, uh, you know, all, all these big businesses. The no GMO these, zones from yeah. the movie. That was, yeah, that's, a, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. another good over point. Over in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, over in Europe, they, they've got whole no GMO zones. Is this, you know, we're going to have to start, you know, really, really, really caring about where we're spending our money because that's what these companies need in order to exist. Right. Okay. And so, uh, all right. So uh, looks like uh, we're having some buffering difficulties with the with the actual film that's streaming. So we're going to play the trailer for the film now, and maybe you'll pick up some more there. My name is Foster Gamble, and I have spent nearly a lifetime trying to figure out what happened that could account for the staggering agony and deprivation on this planet. I set out on a journey seeking to answer questions like, is it even possible for humans to thrive? I found a code, a pattern in nature that's been embedded in arts and icons throughout the centuries. Yes, there have been crashed craft and bodies recovered. But who do you tell that you were involved in a uh, UFO incident without them looking at you like you, you ain't wrapped too tight? It's not etched into the rock. It's not carved. It's burned into the atomic structure in some extraordinary way. I believe that they're giving us a model for accessing energy in a clean, safe, limitless way that could completely revolutionize the way all people live. Right here in this toroid, we have enough energy to transform the entire Earth. And that's not just a theoretical statement, it's literally true. The energy is extracted from the fabric of the space around us, which means it cannot be metered. That is a direct threat to the single largest industry in the world, energy. The suppression of UFO phenomena is hand-in-hand -hand with the suppression of so-called free energy. 
an elite group of people and the corporations they run have gained control over not just our energy, food supply, education, and health care, but over virtually every aspect of our lives. The way the system of medicine is set up, medical education is funded by pharmaceutical companies. We have a privately owned central bank system disguised as a government owned system. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. It gives them the ability to print money in a way that the insiders are protected and everybody else is trained. No matter where you go in the world, he who controls the money controls the world. The time has come to say, enough. There is another way. If you want alternative energy, you don't ask an oil economy to produce it for you. We have to produce it. The power of the internet enables us to share the depth of this research. There is an extraordinary, fierce group of people who are taking this on. We can make a real difference right now. The simple power of truth. We're not nearly as insignificant in our impact as we think we are. There is a force that's more powerful, and that's the power of the people. We can create a world where people can thrive. Thrive. What on earth will it take? Be a part of the conversation. Be a part of the solution. All right, so we're going to go ahead and explore the thrivemovement.com website right now. Just going to get a feel for what it is that they're offering on the site. There is definitely, you know, plenty of information there. Kind of like different issues that you can get involved with right now, such as protecting the internet. I know that's one of them. Um, getting my, I wanted, I wanted to kind of contact them about the Electoral Reform yeah. Act and kind of, you know, that could be something also to go on the site. Yeah. But, uh, <coughs> yeah. The site, as I've been going through it, I don't know if any, you know if, you, if you're watching at home and uh, you visited the site uh, before the um, before the uh, uh, the movie was released. Then uh, they didn't really have it set up uh, as they do now. And this is the GUI's awesome. There's there's a lot of interactivity. Uh, pretty much everything from the film has extended articles. Extended. They go into this knowledge tree. And it's this whole sequence of, you know, I mean, the, the math that we see in the Taurus mm -hmm. is applied to the structure of the website and the 12 points or the 12, uh, what are the 12 sectors. And then uh, problem, solution, it's, I mean, it's driven with the same force and, and momentum that, you know, Zeitgeist Movement is driven with. It's, it's all about change, being a part of the emergent change instead of getting ourselves trapped into this static box of, you know, predictability you know mm -hmm. we need to allow you know th for this change to occur and we need to also help mm -hmm. you know in the process because that's who we are yep. you know we, we limit ourselves when we limit change and, and the potential so yeah definitely I, I, I absolutely intend to get involved with this thrive movement uh, with the thrive movement here it looks like you can you can also create kind of like a profile and start connecting with yeah. other activists mm -hmm. and uh, you know because I you know I don't identify myself as a as a as with just the zeitgeist movement, you know, that would go against our philosophy of emergence, right? You know, so um, I think it's good to uh, to just get involved wherever you can, right? With whatever uh, resonates, like I said, you with, know, with, yeah. with whatever resonates, and you know, I mean, I, I think that most of us are are you know at least beginning to wipe the sleep from our eyes and and yeah. see that. Things could be different, you know. Things, and if you and if you didn't, and you're able to see that, you know, this is this is the way that we're moving, you know, just mm -hmm. by you know observation, and you've already you know maybe progressed. Just know that that it's still continuing in in that direction. And yeah. I think that leaps and bounds, it's it's going to be happening all over the planet here pretty quickly. Yeah. I think this. I really do think this Thrive movie is going to have a huge impact on, at le if if anything else, our perspective. You know, sure. just our, our 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 shared perspective on the way that things could be. Sure. You know, definitely. Uh, I would say. If you aren't, if you don't feel called to get involved with, with some type of organization or something like this, I would recommend watching more documentaries because <laughs> there is so much wrong with the world right now and uh, it, it is absolutely imperative that more people start getting active and involved, informing themselves first and then sharing that information with your friends, your family, uh, the people that you work with, 
wherever you can on your social networks, on Facebook, Twitter, things like this. Um, because, uh, yeah, you guys, we just uh, we, we can't keep this up much longer at no. all. And, it's uh, not sustainable. It's killing no us. Right. That's what's happening. You know, we're sick. We, you know, our system is sick. It's like a tapeworm. That was a great little yeah. image in the movie. And uh, it's just kind of like uh, eating us up from the inside out. And uh, the earth is going to be here long after us unless we make some serious changes and come into balance and harmony in equilibrium with our planetary systems. You know. Which are naturally emerging. Which are naturally emerging, absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the great thing about thi this, this whole Thrive thing. You know, the, the way that they were able to show with the graphics in the film, like how this shape and how the structure of this flow of energy mm -hmm. uh, is Marco Roden, he's another, I don't know, he's another mathematician, you know, up there with like Nassim Harriman. And uh, Marco Roden kind of came to the same conclusion. And it's one of those, it's one of those moments in time where, you know, you had all the Greek philosophers come together, Socrates and Plato and Aristotle. And it's like, wow, here we are again in, in another Renaissance type of, yep. you know, era where we're seeing these patterns and these shapes and yep. people are coming to the same conclusions. And yep. it's like, you know, this, there's got to, if you, if you tap into what's going on and you see these things around you, you have to know that, you know, something big is brewing. Yeah. Something big is bubbling, people. Yeah. It's, it's right beneath the surface, yeah. and it's about to just pop and yeah. explode, and it's going to be great and beautiful yeah. and wonderful. And I, I, I take these cues from, you know, just, uh, you know, we're diggers. You know, we're info diggers. We're, we're all about it. You know, we have a wonderful conversation all the time. But even like the people that I work at, at my, at my job, I would say 65, 70% of the people that I work with are also in this geared kind of train of thought as well. At, you know, I've worked two different places where I've worked where I hear people say, you know, I feel it bubbling, something's gonna pop. You know, we're, we're right there, we're right, right on the cusp. So that's also really encouraging instead of just always us living in our own little bubble of change. Okay, we have, uh, we have just about a minute left in the show. I kinda wanna go over uh, some things that we have upcoming in our uh, upcoming episodes of Zeitgeist Live. Uh, again, we're gonna, our next episode, we're gonna be doing a Burning Man recap. Uh, a couple couple months ago, we all went out to Burning Man and stayed at, at, instead of uh, Camp Zeitgeist, which was a huge hit. Uh, so we're going to be giving you some footage. We're going to have some interviews with some of the other people that were out at Burning Man at Camp Zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. uh, show after that, we're going to be doing our occupation show. We're going to touch on. We're going to have some interviews with some of the occupants around the country. Uh, we're going to be doing some Austin occupants. Uh, also, uh, the next show we're going to be doing some Austin sustainability. You know, what's sustainable in Austin right now? Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're going to be doing our advanced farming technology. We're going to have uh, uh, Ted from the Omega Systems as well as Douglas from Douglas Millett from Cybernated Farm Systems. So keep up with ZeitgeistLive.com with upcoming events. Thank you so much. Take care. God bless. Have a great day. Peace. Later. Bye. Buried under rocks and sand, oil under other lands Always thought to fight the man, now we gotta trust the plan Now we gotta hope another draft ain't around the bend Soldiers dying, soldiers dead, soldiers dying, soldiers dead And if we strike the...